In this lesson, we will be learning about <clears throat> molar heat of fusion and vaporization. So in this case, fusion means to melt. The way I think about it is if you fuse two solids together or you melt them together, you can get one um, solid. So for example, if you're melting two metals together into one, you get an alloy. That is fusion. <clears throat> vaporization means when you're turning it from a liquid to a gas so you are boiling it so we will learn about the molar heat of fusion molar means for every one mole how much energy does it take to melt a substance if you have one mole how much energy does it take to vaporize it so the symbols are as follows the molar heat of fusion is delta h it's called delta h and FUS is short for fusion, or it's also the enthalpy of fusion. Okay, and the units for delta H is kilojoules per mole, as we've done in our previous assignments. Okay, now we're going to focus here on water. So for water, it, to, the energy required to melt one mole of solid ice is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so what that means is you're taking um, H2O, that used to be a solid, and you're putting energy into it, and now it is a liquid. That is the chemical equation. To make it a thermochemical equation, you just put the delta H of this fusion, which is equal to positive 6.01 kilojoules for every mole of this reaction, which happens to be one mole and one mole here. So what this means is, if you double the moles of ice, you double the amount of water. You'll have 12 instead of 6. Okay? And, and on the molecular scale here, you can see in the solid ice, you have hydrogen bonding that is rigid, and these molecules are vibrating in place. But as you turn them into liquid, the hydrogen bonds can break and reform, requiring energy to do that, about 6.01 kilojoules for every mole. And now you have the liquid right here. Okay? In terms of an energy diagram, you can draw it this way, where as, uh, this is the reactants, this is the product. The solid is lower, and this is energy. This is in, let's say it's in kilojoules. So two, f I'm not going to give numbers, I'm just going to give you the, the relative um, hill. So a solid is lower in energy, liquid is higher in energy, and it's going up, which means this is endothermic, that's why it's positive. 6.01. So the, diff the delta H here, or delta E, is equal to positive 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so same idea for um, the molar heat of vaporization. This, this time you are now taking um, liquid and you're breaking the hydrogen bonding, you're totally breaking it into gas. Okay, so if I were to draw it, let me draw it over here, you have HOH, HOH, and there's hydrogen bonding in between. And when they turn into a gas, the hydrogen bonding is totally gone. This is not hydrogen bonding with this H2O. Okay, so to, to here, you're not breaking the hydrogen bonding. You're just weakening them so they can move past each other. But here, you're totally breaking it. Therefore, to vaporize it or to boil it, turn it from liquid to gas, it would take a lot more energy. 40.7 kilojoules for every one mole from 6.01 this one is 40.7. That's a lot more. So, because you're totally breaking the IMF. So here, if I were to draw the energy diagram, it would be energy here. And reactants products. The You're going from liquid to the gas. So the liquid is lower in energy. Gas is higher. This is H2O liquid. H2O gas. So it's going up the hill. So that is also endothermic, and the delta H 
of this reaction of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, I didn't label this. This should be H2O solid to H2O liquid. Okay, so that's the heat of formation, I mean heat of fusion and molar heat of vaporization. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pretend we have some ice in our hands. Okay, so we have ice and what we're going to do with the ice is we're going to melt it. So I'm going to plot what happens Plot what happens when I start with ice and I constantly add heat and until it turns into H2O gas. Okay, and I want us to know what happens to the temperature. Okay, I want you to pause the video and guess what would happen if what happened to the temperature if you keep adding heat to ice? You're going to plot it. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so did you say that it would just keep going up and up and up like this? Okay. Actually, it makes sense because if you add heat, the temperature of that, of that substance should increase, right? It doesn't. So what it does is this. Let me just erase this. So what it does is let's pretend that I have some ice that I took from the freezer and my freezer is below zero. Let's say it's negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then um, this is negative 10. This would be zero. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 degrees. And then this would be 110 degrees. Okay. So... If you take ice that's below zero, and this is zero degrees Celsius right here, these should be equidistant. It just got a little bit bigger. If you warm up ice, it's gonna get warmer and warmer and warmer. That should be a straight line, okay? And it's gonna take energy to do that. And when you're putting energy in, it's gonna go, the molecules are going faster and faster and faster until you hit zero. Because at zero, the ice starts to melt. While it's melting, the temperature actually stays constant, okay? The reason that is, this is melting, is because the energy you're putting in is going into weakening those bonds so they can move past, those hydrogen bonds so they can move past each other, okay? So that will take about 6.01 kilojoules per mole of ice that you do, okay? So here, I'm gonna draw a picture. It's you're melting, this is ice, you're melting the ice. As soon as all the ice, all the ice is gone, it's all melted, it's now liquid. The liquid will now get hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay, and that liquid, um, this is a solid and this is liquid liquid water, it's going to take 4.184 joules to heat up one gram of it by one degree Celsius. Okay, and it's going to keep going up and up and up until you hit 100. What do you think will happen at 100? It's going to start to boil. So at the 100, do you think it'll just keep going up or is it going to flatline? That's true, it's going to flatline, let's say this is 100 right here. It should flatline right here. So that energy you're putting in is not going into the kinetic energy of speeding up the molecules, but it's going into the bonds. You are now breaking the intermolecular forces to go from liquid to gas. And that takes, can you guess how much energy that takes? Yes, that takes 40.7 kilojoules for every mole of water that you have. And this is when you are vaporizing it. That flat line there. So here you are taking liquid and you're turning into gas. 
and it's flat because the energy you're putting in is going into breaking intermolecular forces. As soon as all the liquid is gone, then that's the only time the gas can get hotter and hotter and hotter. So this is all gas. From here, from here to here, it's all gas, gas molecules. And that's why when you open up a lid of your boiling water per se, the, the steam is hotter than the liquid because the liquid will only stay at 100, but the gas can get hotter than 100, okay? Here, the ice can stay colder than zero. And it'll still be solid in this whole region right here. It's all solid. So what we did here is we heated water going to going to the right. Okay. In this point, you're warming up the ice. As soon as you hit zero, it starts to melt. As soon as you're out of ice, it, the liquid warms up. As soon as you hit a hundred, it starts to boil. As soon as you're out of liquid, it all turns into gas and it gets hotter and hotter. You can also cool this. So going backwards would be cooling. Okay, so this is, uh, you can cooling, going this way, and then going up would be heating. When you're cooling here, so it starts with gas, you slow down the molecules, until they start to condense into a liquid. So therefore, going this way, this is at, at 100, it will also start to condense at 100. And then once all the gas is gone, it's all liquid, you're going to warm up the liquid. And then as soon as you hit zero, it'll start to freeze. So this is the freezing point at zero. And then as soon as all the liquid's um, solid, the ice can get colder and colder and colder. So what you can see here is that this first flat line, melting and freezing occurs. At the second flat line, vaporization and condensation occurs. Okay, this is called the heating and cooling curve for water. This is only for water because if you had a different substance, then the temperature of melting and freezing and vaporizing and condensing will be different.